Hey YouTube, hope you guys are doing well this evening. I just wanted to show you guys my 2023 Hull Porter trailer made by Hull Porter out in uh, Iowa. This is a uh, 28 foot trailer. Um, it's 21 foot main deck and a seven foot hydraulic dovetail. Um, this is what they would consider a combination tilt trailer because there's two parts of this trailer that actually tilt. Um, there's actually the main deck that tilts as well as the dovetail, both goes up and down. Um, the trailer has 8,000 pound axles. It's what they would consider the super singles. Um, it's the largest single axle tire that they sell. These are J-rated tires. These are stupid. Uh, these are heavy. These are about 150 pounds a tire, maybe 130 pounds. They're just absurd to lift by yourself. Um, I know that because I mounted that spare up there. Um, it wasn't mounted up there from the factory, and there's actually a second spare mounted underneath the dovetail. Um, I ordered this trailer with several options that they don't always usually come with. First is the color, tractor green is what they call it. It's sort of a, it's basically John Deere green. I actually used John Deere green to touch up the color. I also ordered the trailer with a uh, fender wide floor, which is just a lovely option because the traditional trailer would be here. So this is like an extra eight inches plus the rub rail, plus the stake pockets. I ordered with extra stake pockets and the rub rail is nice for straps. I also ordered this trailer with uh, drive over fenders. Highly recommend them. Uh, I've had trailers with removable fenders. It's kind of a joke. Drive over fenders is absolutely a must. And then also, in my opinion, I see no reason not to add these. They do cost more. It's uh, steel traction bars that they'll weld on the trailer for you. Again, it's an absolute must. Um, I also ordered this trailer with some additional D-rings. Um, in the drive over fender area, I at least recommend one or you're gonna hate yourself because you can't use this whole area, but I added six of them. Um, again, I think uh, these are, um, those, those are very useful. Then this is the uh, dovetail, so it's seven feet, and like I said, the main deck's 21. So I ordered this with traction bars as well. Um, because it is a tilt deck, um, I do have issues in the winter loading skid steers. So I added these for extra traction to get a skid steer up there because they kind of slip around. Um, I don't have too much issues with track units, but with the tire skid steer unit, I do. Um, then up here, I just want to show you guys some things that I added to the trailer that didn't come with the trailer. So the trailer came with these two boxes and this box up here for the winch. And it came with this winch plate. Um, I added just a whole load of electronics, a wireless receiver, a Wayland strobe controller, a bunch of relays, fuse panel, um, this whole entire um, enclosure here I added to the trailer. Um, I also added wireless remote to the trailer. Um, I made it so the strobe lights, so the running lights will actually blink back and forth and be strobe lights, which is handy for unloading stuff on the side of the road. Um, I also pre-wired the trailer for work lights, and I've got a button for work lights here. I haven't added them. Um, I also added a couple of buttons for the winch, the main deck tilt, dovetail tilt, and the hydraulic jack. And the hydraulic jack, again, is uh, worth every penny. Um, honestly, it's about 800 bucks, and if you have to replace a factory jack, it's two or 300, but this is a Stillwell jack, so it's a quality unit. And uh, just the ability to, you already have a truck with a backup camera, so you're gonna back up to it. You're gonna lower this thing down while you're in the truck. Um, and it's pretty sweet. Um, I also did some extra things under the hood here that it doesn't usually come with. I added dual batteries. It comes with one battery. And usually it comes with a bunch of valves and it does have a wireless remote with two buttons uh, up and down. And then you get to select, do I want to do this or that with ball valves? I got rid of all the ball valves and went to a monoblock made by Summit Hydraulics. This unit actually has four circuits. So I've got a spare circuit here. Someday I may add a hydraulic winch, but my winch is currently electric right now. I also added a couple of different battery chargers to this trailer. I added a NOCO Genius 10 battery charger. It's a 10 amp DC battery charger with a regular Edison plug. And then I also added a Red Arc 
BCDC 1212T. This is a three three stage uh, DC to DC charger. And these newer trucks, the alternators stop putting out or start to lower down from 14 volts back to like 12 volts. Well, 12 volts up there is like 11 volts back here and you're actually draining these batteries back into the truck. You can fix that with a diode, but you're still not charging them. So this unit takes anything from eight volts to 14, raises it back up to 14 and a half volts to charge the batteries correctly. Um, and then what I did, so I know that it's charging kind of like a refrigerator truck is I added this green LED. This actually, I can see in my mirror, it lets me know, okay, the trailer's actually charging off the truck right now. So as I go down the road, it's getting charged correctly. Um, but let me show you guys the dovetail really quick. I will lower this back down here. So dovetail is uh, hydraulic as well. It's got a couple of buttons for it. It does go up and that's important for two reasons. When you bring it up, you actually unlock the locks and I've got the locks currently unlocked. I'll show you that in a second. But you can actually go up and you can load off of a semi-trailer down onto your trailer. Most people are not gonna be able to do that. You're not gonna be able to do that with monster ramps. You're not gonna be able to do that with, um, you know, it's a lot of things, but the ability to raise the dovetail. The dovetail has dual cylinders. And while I'm down here, I'll show you, I did add two extra sets of turn signals because this, uh, you, this thing actually raises up raises up pretty far, way farther than you'd ever need it to. I did add an extra spare tire. Um, but again, this gives you the ability to use it as a reverse ramp to load into a taller space, or you can drop it to the ground and load equipment while keeping your main deck flat. Um, and I'm a really big fan of this. They told me um, basically with the locks, so you would raise this unit up to a little bit above flat and this lock fits in between here. When it's locked, it's safe to put up to 10,000 pounds here, which is absurd because of the weight capacity of the axles. I can tell you this dovetail can lift about 3,000 pounds, um, which is tons of weight. So it's honestly, if you've got a, um, like a gator up front and a crew cab long bed truck, it'll raise the tires up with the truck. So maybe it's closer to about 4,000 pounds of what it can actually lift. Um, but I know it can do that because I've done that before. Um, but I'm very thrilled with this trailer and the way it's turned out. Um, I'm thrilled with the dovetail, although it's a little bit excessive. I think a main deck tilt um, is great, but this just gives you a lot more flexibility. You can actually raise this up a little bit, raise that all the way up and kind of load lower profile cars easier. Um, but overall, really thrilled with the way this trailer turned out. Um, and thankful for Jason and his team at Hull Porter in Iowa for building uh, a great trailer and letting me, uh, well, obviously I own it so I can do whatever I want with it, but tweak it a bunch and add uh, work lights and all the boxes. And um, they actually, they sold me this extra toolbox that I use to mount the winch in. Um, and it also has a light switch, but I'm thankful for them and uh, we'll definitely be ordering trailers again from them and uh, grateful for the quality work that they've done. The only complaint I have, and I will just bring it up, the paint, I just wish it was just a little bit better quality. Um, underneath this trailer, they did not paint this whole area. Uh, and so I've gone and touched up a couple of things and don't get me wrong, um, I've used this trailer, stuff hits it, it's no big deal. But um, it's a shame that it was never painted in this area. And the whole underframe is painted. The paint's great, but gosh dang it, they missed the spot. And that's me being an owner, being a little frustrated. This is from, this was painted. This is from getting blasted from stones on the dirt driveway and on the dirt roads we go on. But uh, yeah, thank you and have a good night.